Australia's death toll from coronavirus has risen to 11. Two men in their 70s died in Victoria overnight and there was a death in Queensland yesterday. The global death toll has broken through 20,000. So in Australia, there are now more than 2,600 confirmed cases of COVID-19. That rate rise is still of deep concern. The National Cabinet has agreed to significantly expand coronavirus testing, but under the new guidelines, some people with symptoms still will not be eligible. Flight Centre has announced it's standing down 3,800 workers in Australia. It's one of the many companies doing so as a result of the COVID-19 crisis. The New South Wales government is blocking all passengers from leaving cruise ships until tough new border protections are put in place. While in WA, Australians will be allowed to disembark from incoming cruise ships, but they'll then be taken to Rottnest Island for 14 days of quarantine. But seven passengers on the Artania cruise ship, which is sitting off Fremantle, have tested positive for coronavirus. That ship has no Australian passengers or crew. And WA authorities say only people in a life-threatening medical emergency will be allowed off that ship. The federal government has lifted restrictions on hairdressers, barbers and barbers, scrapping the rule that haircuts would need to be less than 30 minutes. And on the global front, uh, the number of confirmed cases will likely hit half a million in the next 24 hours. There have been more deaths in Spain now than in China. More than 700 people died yesterday alone in Spain. Millions of Americans will soon receive checks in the mail after politicians reached a deal on the biggest economic rescue package in US history. And Prince Charles, the 71-year-old heir to the British throne, has tested positive for coronavirus. It's understood his symptoms are mild. Buckingham Palace says the Queen is in good health. OK, let's go to the detail of some of those issues now. Vic, so Victoria has recorded its first deaths from coronavirus. Reporter James Hancock joins us now from Melbourne. James, good day. So what's been made public about these cases? Well, look, Joe, the grim news was delivered by the state's chief health officer, Dr Brett Sutton, on radio this morning. He said that the two men aged in their 70s died overnight. They're the first deaths to be recorded in Victoria from coronavirus. He said that their deaths weren't unexpected, uh, considering what we've seen overseas uh, and the mounting death toll there. Now, their deaths bring the national death toll from coronavirus to 11. It follows another death, the death of a 68-year-old man from Toowoomba, west of Brisbane. He died yesterday. He uh, got off a cruise ship in Sydney last week. He spent time in intensive care and he died yesterday. His family is in isolation. Now, in that case, Queensland Health says that that man had uh, a serious existing medical condition. Uh, so, uh, while the death toll is rising in Australia, so too the number of confirmed cases. So, in Victoria now, uh, there's been 520 confirmed cases of coronavirus. That's up 54 on yesterday. Uh, but New South Wales is still in the lead. Uh, 1,219 cases of coronavirus in that state, up 190 cases overnight. So while the death toll continues to grow, uh, also the number of confirmed coronavirus cases. And James, what's, what's happening with the police force there in Victoria? Yeah, Victoria Police has revealed that about 200 officers are in quarantine due to coronavirus. It says that a range of measures have been put in place to protect the officers who are still at work. That includes uh, additional cleaning of police stations and patrol cars. Uh, also, it says it's taking very seriously uh, face masks and hand sanitizer. The state's police association would like to see the government move from a state of emergency to declaring a state state of disaster. It says that that would give police more powers to impose uh, social isolation and also crack down on any mass gatherings that we might see. This morning here in central Melbourne, Joe, it is very quiet on the street. Just a few people are out and about, about a handful of people on the trams as they're going through the Burke Street Mall here. So it seems that most people are taking the advice of health authorities and staying home if they can to help uh, 
flatten that curve that we've heard so much about. And James, has that been really noticeable just in the last 48 hours, the, the decrease in the number of people out and about? It certainly seems to be that way. I mean, it's it, at this time of day in Melbourne, normally uh, it would be very busy here in the Bourke Street Mall. Yesterday around town, from my observations, it, it seemed to be very quiet from where I was yesterday. Uh, here in the Bourke Street Mall, it seems to be even quieter. Uh, most people, uh, it, it appears that they are, they are heeding that message from authorities. Uh, they are staying home and they are only travelling into the city if they really need to. Um, it's particularly noticeable on public transport. There have been a lot of trams that have gone by here through the Bourke Street Mall this morning and just a few people, probably about five people on each tram. So uh, it seems that people are keeping away uh, presumably they are at home uh, washing their hands and following the advice from authorities to try to limit the spread of coronavirus. OK, James Hancock reporting there in Melbourne. And health authorities in New South Wales have confirmed 190 new coronavirus infections bring the state's total to 1,219. Reporter Lily Mayers joins us now from the State Emergency Operations Centre. Lily, good morning. So take us through these numbers in New South Wales. Good morning, Joe. Well, the Premier says uh, they were able to announce today that there has been a decrease in the last 24 hours. We've had 190 new cases recorded in the last 24 hours, and though that is a lot, uh, there were 212 new cases recorded in the previous 24 hours. So the Premier was happy to see a decrease, but she certainly wasn't optimistic that we are seeing a slowing in the curve. Um, the Premier and the health, uh, Chief Health Officers say they're expecting uh, Australians returning from overseas in recent um, that coming in the coming days, and so they could boost our numbers once again. Um, the Premier says if there isn't a dramatic reduction in cases, that there will be new tougher lockdown measures introduced and that the public should be braced for it. Here's a little of what she had to say. If we don't see things shifting in the numbers because of those actions, New South Wales will have to go further. And I think everybody appreciates that. But I'm saying no need to panic. Um, supermarkets and essential things will always be available for people to obtain. But if things haven't shifted because of the actions we took earlier in the week and actions which I'm very pleased we took at that time, uh, we will have to go further. And I just want everyone to be prepared for that. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian speaking there just in the last hour or so in Sydney. And Lily, just take us through what, what's happened with the cruise ship situation in New South Wales. It's been a particular problem area and what's happening on that front? Well, following um, the controversy surrounding the Ruby Princess cruise ship, the state government has said no cruise ships can uh, dock in New South Wales and they are now working with the federal government. Um, the Premier says there's possibly thousands of people on uh, at least a dozen ships uh, sitting out in the sea. They're not able to come into shore. Um, that includes both crew and passengers. And she apologised to the families affected and the people who are having to stay out there. But until she says the federal government has worked with the state government to resolve new guidelines surrounding cruise ships and the coronavirus, that those boats would have to, those ships, sorry, would have to stay out there. Um, and she said those, the state government would be working with the federal government on those new guidelines.